Kind of cool. We're going to tear out all this concrete. Alrighty guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are doing a garage tear out. A lot of older garages like this, this is probably from like, it's hard to say. It could be anywhere from like 1910 to 1950, but I'm gonna guess it's probably closer to 1910. This is a super old, it's really beautiful. It's a nice brick garage. So I need to be really careful with the skid steer, but thankfully it is a block foundation. Sometimes they build these off of the garage floor that's not the right way to do it, but sometimes when that happens, we have to cut along the edge. But this is a block foundation, and something kind of cool about this, a coal chute. Back in the day, this is how you'd heat your house. So this is just a cover here. But this here is kind of a trap door that would open, and you'd shovel your coal, and that's how you could get it into your basement easy. Kind of cool, but we're gonna, tear out all this concrete. You can see it's in uh, pretty rough shape. Looks like somebody patched it here and they're totally remodeling this house. So you always wanna start with your new concrete. We're gonna be doing the driveway here in a few months, but we're gonna start with this garage because it's raining today. So it should go pretty smooth, but we have to be really careful because of the brick. So I'll likely poke a hole kind of in the center. That way I can pull pieces away from the wall. You don't wanna be prying because if one of these walls starts to go, the whole thing probably would just come right down. So these garages are always a little tough. You gotta be very careful and delicate, but that's why they called us, because we know what we're doing. Alrighty guys, sorry I forgot to record this. Pretty simple though, I just brought in some stone, compacted it, and put down this plastic. This is gonna be the first pour of the year for the guys, so dusting off the cobwebs from the long winter and uh, getting ready to have a great summer. The guy in the orange gloves, uh, he's new, this is his first time pouring, so if you see him standing around, that, uh, that's why he's never even seen concrete, so gotta teach him. This is a nice small pour to start everybody out on using the 10-foot Marshalltown screed there because this is such a small garage. I didn't want to use a vibrating screed. It's just not worth cleaning it, and I need to get back in shape myself. We do an eighth inch per foot pitch on all of our garages, so that means for every one foot that it is deep, we go up one-eighth of an inch. This was a, I think it was a 21, yeah, it was a 21-foot garage, so I just kind of round to two and a half inches. And uh, that's, that's about enough to not really notice it on your feet, but yet the water will still run out with the car. Got the four foot Cadillac bull float here. Uh, this is some, I don't know if it's a polycarbonate or what kind of plastic it is, but it seems to leave a lot smoother finish and it's easier to clean than the magnesium. 
We've been using this for probably five years now and I'm definitely uh, set on this plastic type. I know this is comical bringing the four foot trowel machine on such a small pour, but this is a new machine to me and I just recalibrated everything and put all new blades on it. So I wanted to make sure it was dialed in. We have some big pours coming this year and I gotta make sure it's perfect before I bring it on a huge floor where I can't really afford a mistake. On a floor this size, the machine could completely break apart and I could just do everything by hand and it would be totally fine. But everything was flawless. This machine is a beauty. It's a high speed 46 inch Whitman and I have the float blades on right now. That's a thicker steel blade that you put over top and that really gets it flat. Now I hit all my edges by hand. I don't have an edging trowel machine, so it's a little bit of a pain in the butt, but you just hop on your knee skis and it'll really help you get a nice looking floor. The mini was here because we were tearing out the driveway, so it was nice being able to get the float blades off. You can see me taking them off. They're kind of just a cover that goes over my finish blades. Set it back down, time to hit it again, crossing up directions each time. I was tearing out the driveway so I would hit it, go take a load, come back and hit it to buy me some more time. It was, uh, it was about 50 degrees so it was taking a while to set up so I wasn't really worried about losing it. Now you can see it's starting to look like smooth concrete. I'm still making footprints but it's getting there. If you guys have any questions about concrete, let me know below and I can uh, do my best to answer them. This is the third hit, I believe. You can see where the mini is out and getting further down the driveway. And now it's starting to really look nice. This is me hitting the final edges. Again, I don't have a edger, so the machine can only get about two inches away from the wall, so if you don't hit it by hand, it looks like crap. This is my final hit with the machine. I came and saw cut it the next morning, and this was one of the flattest garages I've ever poured. I don't know if that's the new 10-foot screed or if it's the four-foot trial machine on a one-car garage, but I'm very happy with it, and I'm looking forward to using it on a big floor. Hope you guys enjoyed this short video. If you have any questions, just drop them below and I'll uh, do my best to answer them. We just hit 2,000 subscribers, so if you're not part of the ranch, subscribe below. And we'll see you on the next one, guys.